Hi everyone, I have come to do a tutorial on my altered playing cards. There are hundreds and hundreds of tutorials out there so please don't think this is my idea. I've got a couple of variations that I do um, but this is, these are some that I have made. So I'm just going to show you what I do. So. Um, the first thing that you really need to do is um, sand the playing cards. These are slightly bigger than these ones. Apparently poker playing cards are slightly bigger um, than standard British playing cards by that much. So these are American poker cards. These ones I've already sanded. So I've got one here and this is a medium um, grade uh, sandpaper, it's probably not the best to use, you probably want a fine sandpaper but if you take too much of the image off it really doesn't matter because we do cover a lot of that up so make sure you get around the edges if you don't sand it the problem you're going to have is the um, paper, tissue paper, napkin, whatever you use will not adhere to the playing card so it is really important to, to do that. I have got um, somewhere. This is what happens if you don't sand the playing card. I actually really like this and did a few just so I could have this to make as pockets in my journals. If it's stitched in, it's really strong. It's obviously two coats of Mod Podge with the napkin in between, but it completely slid off the card. So that's what might happen. Um, so. Uh, that's the first step. The second step is um, to separate your napkins. Now thanks to, um, I think it was Crafty Irina, I watched how she does that. So and just to give you a little idea how difficult it is to get really pretty napkins in the UK, I picked these up yesterday and for 10 it was £3.25. So it's not cheap. So what you're going to need is some sellotape. However, you don't want it really, really sticky. So I wrap it around my hand and then I just dab it on my clothes just to get rid of the, make, the most of the stickiness and then stick it down and peel. And you'll see it will just simply pull apart. Now I keep that because I'll use that in something else and turn the turn it over and same again and then you can literally pull the second layer of the napkin away so you've got just one ply of napkin to put onto your playing cards so I already have done a few and have a few that I've already got ready that's the longest part isn't it of making a tutorial actually the preparation it's, this has taken me all morning, so I do hope the um, I hope it's recording actually. Yeah. <laughs> so what we do is we take take our playing cards. I'm not going to use that one for a moment because I'm going to show you what I do with that later. Make sure you've got a baby wipe and a tissue on hand. And sorry about the state of my mat. This is what I put on top of my dining table to work. So Mod Podge. This is the mat. I'm sure it would make no difference if you use the gloss, except it will be shinier, obviously. Um, my glue is rather disgusting, actually. I never clean the top before I put the lid back on. So what I'm going to do is take my brush, brush on the Mod Podge. I'm sure you can use gel medium or any type of PVA um, would probably do the same thing. So, pop that on, I just pick up my playing card, give it a wipe and then I take the part of the napkin that I would like to use, I lay it really gently over the card and then I just slowly push the napkin to the edges and at this stage it doesn't matter if it rips or you damage the napkin. You can either pop a little bit more on top or you can just leave it because we're going to do 
a couple of more things to the card so you won't really notice it. So what I then do is turn it over and I roughly cut around the edge. I'm not worried about being too neat at this point. And then I pop it over there to dry. Um, obviously I'll use this for another card but what I do with the scraps is I use it in my journal. So these pages I've just gessoed and all the scraps of napkin and bits of paper that I've been using for this project I've just popped on there. So let's do another one. I think we'll use the but butterfly. So this is, I'm going to do another kind of tutorial a bit later as well. Uh, not as Not as detailed as this one but I just want to run through a project that I've been working on and talk about my um, handmade vellum. I've had quite a lot of people contact me and say, how do you do it? And I've actually been working on um, something else as well. So I, I, I want to share that with you. So I'll do that in a bit after this one. Okay, so pop the napkin down push it out really slowly. You want to make sure you're getting out all the really big bubbles but the little wrinkles actually make it look, look quite nice but it's still nice to get a reasonably neat, a neat surface. So then cut around. This is mad, I'm actually really shaking. It's like I'm doing this on national television live. <laughs> I'm sure it gets easier. I hope it gets easier or I won't be doing many more of them. So that's our second one. Um, the third one, that I'm not obviously going to sit and do hundreds of these because you will get very bored. I've got a bit of sellotape stuck to that. See what's happened? But that doesn't matter. Um, so the, the next one we're going to do, using napkins over the picture playing cards, I, I actually don't like that very much. So I'm going to use something a little bit different. Now um, I've recently made a sewing journal and I bought two vintage sewing patterns to make that and this is kind of like tissue paper that the pattern that you cut the pattern from and I actually made a few of these um, yesterday. Oh, yeah I haven't got one ready that's typical isn't it I haven't got one here. Um, so I'm going to use this on this um, picture playing card and I'm actually going to do this on several picture playing cards, not right now obviously because you will get bored, but I actually really like the effect, it looks really quite cool. So again I'm going to just wipe my surface, it doesn't look like I do that very often does it? Cleaning. <laughs> and I don't know if I want that bit or the lines. I think I'm going to go for the lines so I'm just going to pop that down, slowly push it out, get rid of all the big bubbles and then I'm just going to roughly cut around that one like I did the others. So what you need to do is leave these to dry. I would not recommend a heat gun. I've tried a heat gun and it curls the card, it does funny things to the to the glue so I'm not going to I'm not going to um, use my heat gun to dry those so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop those aside for now and those cards I didn't use and the next stage that I do is I maybe decoupage them not all of them and you can use all sorts of things but I've just got some music paper here I'm going to tear off a little piece of this I like torn edges, I don't I don't like it all cut neat and tidy. That's not kind of how I roll. So you just tear up a bit of music paper, ink the edges. And this is um vintage photo distress ink from Tim Holtz. As I'm sure everybody knows. <laughs> I actually bought two distress inks. And I thought, I can't find it now. I thought the colour was going to be really, really nice. I bought old paper, and I thought it was going to be kind of like tea staining, and it's not. It's really green, which is okay on um, tags in nature journals and things like that. But 
I must say I'm not a big fan of that colour. <laughs> so what I'll do is take the Mod Podge. This one's fully dry. Just pop it onto the card. It doesn't matter where you want to pop it. Stick it down. Again, it doesn't matter if it hangs over the edge because we haven't trimmed our card yet. So pop a little bit here. You don't want to put too much glue on. This is a case of um, least least amount actually works best. Sorry, that didn't make a lot of sense, did it? If you put too much on, it doesn't work as well. You get lots of bubbles. Well, put the right side on. And we don't need to worry too much about if there's a little area we haven't glued because we're going to Mod Podge the whole top of the card once it's finished. So that's what I do next. Just do a little bit of um, decoupage onto those. And then I would let that dry. And then the final step, well it's not really a final step actually. So these are cards that I did earlier. I always like to see some of the, um, the pattern of the um, playing card coming through. This one, for example, I like it, and it's got a number three there, but you can't see quite as much of the playing card, and I like that, because otherwise you may as well be using playing card. The only benefit is you haven't got to cut them out, so that's quite good. So what I would do now is I take my stays on, and you can use whatever stamp you like, but at the minute I'm just, oh, can't stop using this, my Bow Bunny stamps. Um, I looked everywhere for some script stamp and um, this is the only one I could find. It was pri pricey actually for me. I don't spend a lot of money on stamps usually. So pop that down and all I do is just stamp them everywhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be and I don't use the first generation actually because it is quite dark so stamp it somewhere and then stamp it onto the card. These ones I probably will use the stamp as it is because the paper is quite thin. I don't know if anyone, I always think this, when I was a little girl, I always wanted to be in, work in a post office and stamp things and that always, this always reminds me of that. I remember getting a, getting a, oh can you see, look I forgot to stamp that off once, so that's quite dark compared to that one. Sorry about the pink tape, that's so I know where I've got to work. Do a bit more on there. Oh, honestly, these tutorials. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. If you're bored, you know, please um, find someone more interesting to watch. Okay, so that's what I do. Now, once I've done that, let's clean my stamp. So once I've done that, um, I like to really distress them and make them darker. I don't, I'm not a big fan of white, um, so I would like to get rid of all of this. So again, I get my distress ink, and this stays on stamps. They dry so quickly, and, and it's there for good. So I will just literally use my stain distress ink and just go around the whole card. I don't go around the edge on its own at this point because we haven't cut we haven't cut the, um, the paper down so I do that right at the very end so that's what I do especially on this white napkin I'll give that quite a good going over <laughs> Sorry, it's my phone. I'm not very popular. Nobody ever contacts me via my phone unless I'm doing something like this. And then everybody seems to send me text messages and things. So, now they don't look quite as white 
and um, bright, which I, I actually prefer this. So I'm, not, I'm just going to do three, I'm not going to do them all. So what I do now is, um, now is when I would cut around the edge because we are going to Mod Podge these again. So what I do is I always work from the back so I can see and I just trim off that excess and again I keep these tiny little strips because that makes a really nice kind of effect on a page if you, if you just lay them all next to each other. So cut all this off. I always end up with a massive pile of bits that most people would just put in the bin. I don't. I might actually try using those strips on another card. Not now, but that probably have quite a nice little pattern to it. And stays on ink. I always get it everywhere. I really do. And I've only ever been able to find black. I don't know if they do any other colour. If they do any other colours, please let me know. I've not seen them anywhere. Not in, not in the UK anyway, where I've got access to. So that's what I do. I've tried to get various stages all ready so I can just carry on and there are cards. I'm actually surprised I've got this far without forgetting something. So let's just do these two. So we've got our two cards. Um, we've got one with a sewing pattern and one with a napkin. And now this is where I will ink, ink around the edges. I don't know why I stain the whole card before I cut the edge off. I'm sure you could just cut the edges off and then stain the whole card and ink around the edges. I've got a really short concentr concentration span, so I like to vary things as much as I can. And that's why I probably work on three, four, five, I don't know how many journals sometimes at a time. Because I'll do something and I'll get bored with the pattern or the theme and then I'll have to move on and do another book. And I have so many half-finished books everywhere around the house. So once we get to this stage, I will literally give it a whole coat. And I really, I know that if you use the Distress inks, you get the bleed when you use um, anything water-based on top. Um, I actually really like that effect because it just makes it look a bit more vintage. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, if you are worried about your Mod Podge though, before you do this, I would pop it into um, an, a, a different pot because you do sometimes get ink on the brush and then you put it back in your Mod Podge and then the Mod Podge will be a lovely brown colour. I only actually use this for decoupage so I'm not really worried. This particular one. Okay, so those two now need to fully dry and that will take, um, it doesn't actually take very long, maybe half an hour. And again, I wouldn't use, I wouldn't use a heat gun if I were you. So that is pretty much, um, at that stage you could call it done. You could just say that's my card and, and leave it at that. You could do some more stamping over the top, you could do some more decoupage over the top, you could do all sorts of things. Um, what I do is I take some of my, I'm just going to move those out of the way so I don't stick them to anything. I take some, <laughs> I'll stick them to the paper that I'm about to get out. So I take some uh, tea stained um, copy of paper and I love this and as Michelle Scott would do, it's lovely. I really do love tea stained paper. So what I do is I lay them out, cut round them, and then I sew them onto um, the paper. So these are all, this is how I would finish them off. I would literally just sew them all because, and I've used black on all of them because it just works with this particular theme. If I was using a different style napkin, maybe I'd use um, a different colour. This one I've actually stamped um, a parrot onto, and I do like that. I do like the stamp, but I'm not. I'm not sure. Not sure if I'd use them. So that's the cards. Then what I did is I'm making a, a nature themed journal at the moment, and let me just grab four of these. Before I 
sewed them all individually, what I did was I laid them out and I laid four of them out like that and I actually run them through my machine, my sewing machine, like this. Now I, I'm not going to attempt to use my sewing machine on camera because it is really temperamental. It is pants but last time I called it pants it stopped working on me completely so I love my machine. And I ended up with this, which I love. And I this is for my current journal that I'm making, one of them. And I'm going to do this more because I think it's awesome. I really like how it looks. Um, you can use um, napkins that match or just napkins that go together. You can also use um, painted papers, papers you've made yourself, and just make it into this little kind of concertina book to go into a pocket in a journal. Or I really like them as, as they are. Just you could pop this in a, if you're going out for the day for example, you could just pop this in your handbag, couldn't you, and make notes um, as you go through your day. So the other thing I have started to do is add paper clips, because um, I think that looks really cute, adding paper clips to them, and also dangle charms. Um, and if you kind of clip that at the, at the edge of a page in your journal, you're going to have your dangle hanging out of your book, which looks awesome, but you're also going to have it attached to this this tag. And I've um, added a little blue dangle here because of the um, blue butterfly, but having looking at it now, probably would have used a darker jump ring, um, but I'm waiting for some jump rings at the minute. So, that's just a couple of ways you can alter your playing cards. Um, these are also obviously used as ATCs, which is great because they are little individual pieces of artwork. I think they're lovely. So, tutorial number two. Boom, done. Um, I hope it's been helpful. I really do because I wouldn't want you to waste your time watching if, if you haven't learned anything or come up with a little idea of your own. But uh, the next tutorial, like I said, um, it's not really a tutorial as such, I'm just going to talk through a project that I'm doing and, and explain how I make my vellum. And um, thanks very much for watching everybody, bye!